like you to take your Bibles and turn to 1 Peter 1, 3 through 16. I'm going to be reading there in a little bit. I'd really like you to look at the words, listen to the words that I'm reading, and really take it to heart, really think about what's being said, in particular the last three verses, 13 through 16. When I get there, really take that to heart and consider those words. 1 Peter 1, 3 through 16. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who according to his great mercy has caused, caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to obtain an inheritance which is imperishable, undefiled, and will not fade away, reserved in heaven for you, who are protected by the power of God through faith for, for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials, so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And though you have not seen him, you love him. And though you do not see him now, but believe in him, you greatly rejoice with joy inexpressible and full of glory, obtaining as the outcome of your faith the salvation of your souls. As to this salvation, the prophets who prophesied of the grace that would come to you made careful searches and inquires, seeking to know what person or time the Spirit of Christ within them was indicating as he predicted the sufferings of Christ and the glories to follow. It was revealed to them that they were not serving themselves, but you, in these things which now have been announced to you through those who preach the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things into which angels long to look. And then really listen to 13 through 16. Therefore, prepare your minds for action. Keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance, but like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, you shall be holy, for I am holy. I'd like to really, right now, is, I want you to pay attention to the whole thing, but really concentrate on verse 13. Therefore, prepare your minds for action, keep sober in spirit. Fix your hope completely on the grace to be brought to you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. And the key word I'd like you to think about is prepare. In our teenage class, we've been talking about specific topics. And that's going on throughout the world here in the United States. And we define that word, what, what the Bible means by the world. And we went around the room and everybody had their own definition, but one that came out that really fit was anything that's in opposition to God. That's what defines the world, anything that's in opposition to God. And our specific topics so far have been dating, sexual immorality, modesty, abortion, homosexuality, and transgender. And these can be difficult topics. They can be difficult to discuss if you're not prepared to deal with them. All the answers that we need are in scripture. They tell us how to deal with all these things. And the world will tell you that it's not in there. It's an obsolete thing. It's old. It's not. It's all there. You just got to search it out and you got to look for it and prepare yourself to deal with these things. And I did them in a certain order for a reason. The first one was dating and sexual immorality. That was my first class. And we discussed getting it in your mind to find that right person. Look at scripture, at the descriptions of people. Uh, when you think about the qualifications of elders and deacons for a, a woman, a young woman, those are the type of men they should be looking for. Same with the men. They should be looking for that helper that's gonna help them succeed and help each other succeed at being a Christian. These are things that you should prepare your mind for. Young people should prepare their mind in this way, preparing their life to serve God. 
to live that spiritual life. That is the most important thing. We're looking for that eternal inheritance that was described in 1 Peter. And then we talked about modesty. Not only knowing how to present yourself physically, but also what's in your head. You need to control those thoughts. You need to have modest thoughts, modest actions. These things are important to God. There, doesn't speak a lot about, and the word modesty is not in the Bible that often, but there's a lot of scripture in there that tells us how to be modest. And one that came to mind for me was Matthew 5, 27 through 28, because sometimes the men are left out of the modesty definition. It's for both of us. And we need to be modest of the mind. So Matthew 5, 27 through 28 says, you have heard that it was said, you shall not commit adultery, but I say to you that everyone who looks at a woman with lust for her has already committed adultery with her in his heart. So we can't always control what people put in front of us, but we can control our thoughts. We can control our actions. And as Christians, we should control how we act and how we look, how we present ourselves. We need to be modest. It should be a modest life. And people need to see that. And we need to prepare our minds that way. We need to prepare ourselves to present ourselves in a modest way and also think modestly. And then we talked about abortion. That's a real emotional topic right now with Roe versus Wade being passed or being struck down and bringing the laws to the states. From a Christian standpoint, this should be an easy thing. We are always should be on the side of life for the baby and for the mother. mother. We should always be on that same side. Even though we are Christians, one of the students brought up, it just should be human. It should be the human idea that we should always treat that baby as a life and always respect that life. That was brought out too. It wasn't from a religious standpoint, but also the psychology of it, the damage it does to the mother that chooses that idea. It does damage, and science will tell you that. There's all kinds of information where it talks that where abortion should not take place. It's dangerous and it's damaging. So as Christians, we need to prepare how to deal with those things, how to avoid even putting ourselves in a situation of an unwanted pregnancy. And that's why the order of that, our lessons in that class were important. Dating, avoiding that sexual immorality, talking with your partner, making a, an agreement and communicating with each other that you're going to not have a physical relationship until marriage, making sure that's important. That'll avoid that even from happening, an unwanted pregnancy happen. So it should never enter the picture. You should always be in control. You should always prepare yourself for those proper decisions. But sometimes things happen that are beyond our control. Sometimes maybe you may have a weak moment and you may be confronted with an unwanted pregnancy. Sometimes it's not in your hands, maybe due to rape or something else, but maybe it's because you, you, were, you had a weak moment and it just happened. Prepare yourselves for that too. Prepare your minds how you're going to deal with that. Talk to your family about it before it happens. Discuss it with your parents. If this happens, how will they handle it? Uh, come up with those answers right away. Are you going to put it up for adoption? Are you going to keep it? What are you going to do? But abortion is not the answer. God didn't say Christianity was easy. Sometimes difficult decisions have to be made. We should always be on the side of life, always. But sometimes it's tough. But it's always right when you're following God's direction. Those things are always right. So the idea of here, here is preparing yourself. And we talked about transgender today. There's only two, de two, two genders. The Bible describes them. There's only two. You know, a lot of people say there's nothing about transgender in the Bible. It's all over the place. It talks about man and woman, and there's no other. We can't say anything else about it. There's two genders. God knows. God knows, and that's where we should be following. And in saying that, 
I would like to say we have an amazing group of young people. We really do. And we, you should be proud of each one of those uh, people that are in our class. They have great understanding and they are represent, representing the church very well. And they are strong-minded and the parents should be commended for raising them in that way. Because they're making, they're getting prepared right now to make life-changing decisions. Some of them have already started college. Some of them are starting high school. These things get challenged, challenging because the teachers are teaching stuff of the world. They gotta be prepared to fight those things and to battle those things that are coming their way. And the only way they can do that is to prepare their minds, be prepared to fight those things and challenge them. So all these choices that they're making, where they go to college, their careers, their mates, these are all life changing and they can pull them one way or the other, either towards God or away from God. They need to start thinking right now those things that are gonna take them towards God. And we need to help get them there. We need to help make their plans. They have to be ready for that. They have to be preparing their minds for action and being obedient to God. So every decision they make, they should have God on their minds and they should be working through his word, studying his word and finding the answer because all the answers are there. The world will tell them that it's an obsolete book, that it's old, it's washed up. It's not true, don't listen to that. So in consideration of that, we show God our love by our obedience to him. That's the only way we show God our love. So if we're choosing to be a Christian, we need to be obedient to him.